Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another vlog. I'm finally in Belfast, Northern Ireland for the Wanyang World Summit. The summit is taking place from the 2nd to the 5th of October. So basically from Monday to Thursday. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here. My room has such a nice view. That's why I keep looking that way. And this is where the lighting is so bomb. But yeah, I'm here and I've spent most of the afternoon just settling in. It's been a long, long 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 almost 24 hours of travel but we're finally here oh my gosh i could write an essay about all the things i hate about heathrow anyway i'll call up today is my first day and i'm in my springboard gear because there's a game today i don't know where i'm going to watch the game but i would really like to however we are going to dinner at in about 10 minutes um it's surprisingly warm here so it was only it is only 16 degrees but i just went outside and i went in this t-shirt and i was fine which normally in south africa i wouldn't be caught dead seen outside in 16 degree weather but anyway moving on i'm really excited for this week i've never been to belfast it's never even been on my list or on my radar um so yeah i'm excited for the summit just to hear things about how people are doing like their part in changing some of the world's biggest issues so yeah i'm wondering how i could also you know make my mark because apparently it's going to be really intense i went to the bodega which is a tesco express and i almost got dribbled by self-checkout that guy is so strict the security he's like hurry up hurry up hurry up swipe your things tag and then you're like yo Anyway, <laughs> I'm ready for dinner. I'm just waiting out time. I'm having a copper bag. Alcohol is surprisingly, things actually in general are surprisingly reasonably priced here. Um, but only at the supermarket. I don't know about at restaurants because the restaurant downstairs, a cocktail is 12 pound. Um, but a four pack of these was like six pound. What is that in rand? was six times 20 120 so yeah that's kind of what you would get copperberg for in south africa so it makes sense um and then i bought a bunch of red bulls and they were all like one pound 80 each so yeah it's all right in terms of the supermarket but maybe it's just those things maybe it's in other aspects it's too much for the people anyway waiting out time until it's time for dinner and then we're gonna head out the place we were going, yo, show me, I don't remember the name, but I will definitely write it in the bottom when we get there. So, let's get into the video. I tried the soda and I'm afraid it tastes like ass. <laughs> Now I have to commit to my decision and finish it. Damn. <laughs> Just had some breakfast. I'm surprisingly not that cold. Like inside here and a little bit outside, but anyway. <sighs> it's about to be a very, very long day. Outfit of the day. Lady called Yasmina Jaidi, she's the one in charge of this university, on how to revisit this, the the competency the skills for our top leaders for our top exec and thinking okay, what does it mean to be responsible and how do oh, you lead me to And when we 
idea. They found a diamond-shaped table so the leaders could be sitting next to each other and across from each other at the same time. <laughs> Day one over, it's been a long day, it's like almost midnight and we have to be ready by 10 to 8. So all I want to do right now is shower and sleep. Afternoon, we have Michael Mola, the former Under Secretary General of the United Nations. We have Professor Thuli Mondosela, Advocate of the High Court of South Africa. <laughs> the South receive it and the people of the South benefit and the people in the North think, what on earth my money, has my money been spent on? And it is the assumption that as we progress into a, a more uh, equal world, if we're ever going to get there, especially across the continent of Africa in particular, that... Everything I need between those stars Every time I look into I think how we try to make social change is often by uh, foundations and trying to do good and make a really positive impact in our communities, or because it's a very patriarchal, hierarchical, male-dominated structure still in the world of sport, we simply show up as women and kick some ass, and that's making social change. Firstly, hello to everyone in the room. <laughs> Saying. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, the game of rugby is very dear to me. Um, and um, you know, when I was uh, young, um, uh, I was born and raised in Harare, in Zimbabwe. And my parents instilled in me, you know, self belief. Um, and they told me that if I, you know, if I put my mind to anything and really work hard at it, I could be successful. So you know, uh, that was pretty much the foundation. For me, for my rugby career, I obviously discovered that I was very really talented in the game of rugby. Um, at the age of 16, I started playing at nine years old. Um, and at the age of 16, everybody was saying, hey, you can't become a professional if you take it seriously. And so I did. And the journey was not, you know, it was not straight, you know. <laughs> it had a lot of, you know... Uh... Nowhere to turn and fears that, like so many other girls, I've been written off as dramatic or hysterical. I ignored my problems, hoping that they would go away. Instead, they snowballed, leading me to a dark breaking point. Way too often, our society only recognizes mental health when we reach crisis levels. It took me reaching rock bottom to get the help I needed all along. Businesses and civic society, through their work, they employ various strategies such as public speaking, and engagements, workshops, and awareness campaigns. By being open and vulnerable about their own experiences, they aim to humanize mental health issues and, and inspire others to do the same. In addition to storytelling, they strongly advocate for inclusivity and diversity in mental health conversations. Please give a round of applause to, to Emily. This special will be celebrating the 75th anniversary. So many people who are complaining that there isn't enough equal enjoyment in human rights. But like the people in the book called Who Moved My Cheese, nothing moves unless you move. So 
we can complain that not enough has been done and that there are still people who are languishing in all kinds of want. changing and looking and creating and seeing what solutions there are to problems and the conclusions of our meetings very much driven by a lot of your colleagues in different parts of the world then go on uh, to the leaders. <laughs> was impossible, sat on the New York Times bestseller list for three years, it sold. I promise there's a point to this story and not just doing it for applause. It sold millions of copies, in some places it increased poetry, and it will break our hearts, and there will come days where you just want to give up, and I've been there. And when you're down and you want to give up and you just can't find a reason to get back up again, I need you because you are not just the leaders of tomorrow, but the leaders of today. I need you to remember that you're in good company, that this erasure has been happening to countless people before you and countless people standing here with you today. I arrived at the gates of the city Tired from all the battles I fought to get there. I knocked. But when no one opened up, I kicked the door down. I stepped inside and all the people inside turned to look at me. How dare you enter without our permission, they asked. You better leave, they said to me. You better run. Because people like you are not welcome to be amongst people like us. But their threats never faze me. I found a quiet place to rest for the evening. And while the rest of the city slept, they came to set me on fire. But I didn't die that night. When the flame kissed my skin, I became the fire itself. I burned so hot, even the sun licked its lips in want of me. When they found me the next day, all lit up with rage, they dragged me to the shore to teach me what happens to girls who have the audacity to burn this bright. They held me under water. But I didn't sink to the bottom as my flames went out. I shapeshifted into water and I became the ocean. I took a deep breath in and I came crashing back in waves so big I sent everyone home dripping wet with thoughts of me. The next day, they arrived at the shore with bottles and containers, thinking that they were gonna just pour me into them and screw the lids on tight. I mean, what does it even feel like to be so ignorant 
that even after seeing me go from woman to fire to water, they really thought they were going to fit an entire ocean into a container? It took them months to get every drop of me off that shore. And when they poured the last bit of me into some bottle and put a lid on me, well, that's when the celebrations started. They thought they had finally done it. They thought they had destroyed the woman who would not die. They danced and they sang in honor of the end of me. But as soon as the fireworks started, I howled so loud that every last bottle and jar I was contained in burst into a million little pieces. I made it rain diamonds that night with one wave of my hips and one flick of my fingers. I drank the whole place up. They should have known. You can't quiet a woman who was born muzzled. I spent my childhood unstitching the closure of my lips. I walked through my father's fist. I pulled myself out of the dark before the age of six. Had a machine gun cocked between my legs too early. I swam through blood. I swallowed the fools who thought they were gonna eat me up. You can't burn, sink, or contain me. Cause the thing is, I'm not afraid of losing it all. Cause surviving is what I'm good at. They could take away everything I have. And I would just conjure this beautiful life up all over again with the bones in my back. My bare hands have universes inside of them. You don't want to see what I do when I get angry. Because I am the woman who will not die. So remember that next time you come for me. It was a long yet inspirational week seeing what the youth is doing around the world. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel for more travel content. See you in my next video.